All right, guys, watch this video for Thursday, May 7th. Showing you the SPY here, um, gapped up a little bit. Pretty narrow range day, but uh, we switched to five minute candles. You can see what it did today. Just kind of chopped sideways. Most of the day was right here. All this sideways chop and then sold off at the end. Um, very, very proud of the group in chat because some amazing spots today, especially in a choppy market. You know, you'd think, well, maybe there was nothing to trade. I'm gonna highlight a couple for you here and I'm gonna go right into the watch list. Keith over there in Ireland called this opening range breakout. We threw um, CARS on the morning gap playlist. You can see the close yesterday and the gap up today. Pops, sells off, calls it basically over the half, right? 552 idea. Um, man, look at this thing. Went up to almost 740. I also called a 520 touch right there. I literally got filled at the bottom of that candle. I got a partial fill at 631 on a pullback play too. So it was a couple nice calls in this, but what a great call by Keith. Um, he's very, you know, uh, very new to the trading course, and it's cool to see a, a newer student posting stuff that we look for. Um, and you can see a screenshot of his post there, even through Rule 29. And um, and a couple. Of, speaking of teamwork in the chat room, that is the wrong one. That's the same picture I just showed you. All right, there it is. I found it. Um, screenshot here showing how Danik and Dylan M both teamed up. <laughs> you can see them time stamped there. Both of them spotted this great setup in overstock, which was just basically um, as it went red to green today, right through the open, right around 1450. So you have a half number inflection point, and then you have the recent high from a few days ago. I don't know what is that, uh, three or four days ago, where it gapped up and sold off. So you had sell you had shorts caught, and there's a lot of shorts in this name anyway. And I think when it gapped up, I think this was on earnings. Um, sellers came in and got pretty confident. And then you had this real tight range. So this combined a few things that we teach, right? One, um, you have the sellers kind of failing here over 1454. Well, you had a half number inflection point through 1450 and a two day high break. You had several things converging and you had the 1454 right above that 1450. So we talk about stacked catalyst. You had a catalyst above as well. Um, so a couple great heads up by Danik and Dylan. Danik over in France, Dylan, should I say supposed to be on his honeymoon and not honeymoon one year anniversary type uh, secondary honeymoon um, and that of course thanks to COVID-19 got canceled and nobody can go anywhere um, but he's killing it in the chat room and he's making money at least so uh, it, it, when he finally does get to Hawaii he can um, maybe spend an extra week there right um, anyway let me show you overstock because there it is on five minute candles it actually ended up really going out at the highs for the day too a um, couple of really nice calls there. Wayne called um, Beyond. One more highlight from chat and then I'll get to the list. Wayne called Beyond several times. I want to say through 113 early, then through 116 here, and it moved up a couple bucks there. And then his best call through 120 here because it never looked back and ended up going out at its highs right around 126.50. So um, several great calls by Wayne on Beyond, BYND today. And so let's go straight to the watch list. What are we going to watch tomorrow? Well, BYND is one of them. Um, as often happens when you have a stock full of shorts and you have a strong close like this, in, in after hours, you, it, usually they continue for a little bit. And actually, as I'm talking, it's trading at 128.22. So it is uh, gapping, at least for the moment. Um, that's something I might have felt comfortable holding a few shares into after hours just because of that strong close. But I didn't. Um, but some great calls in that one today. We're going to watch it tomorrow. M-A-R-K. This one, I was on the fence about putting on the list. And matter of fact, in after hours, it's trading at 92 cents. Um, the thing is, they there was tweets going out about a possible um, deal with Wynn Resorts, maybe, to uh, install their thermal scanners, you know, I guess to try to get people back to work and, and people back, back in and life back to normal, right? So thermal scanners are kind of a new thing that people are looking into. Um, but someone then then it started coming out that maybe it was um photoshopped you know there was supposed to be an email or i don't know um so anyway uh, it's very sketchy so be really careful but if this thing gives an a plus setup um you know maybe the news becomes actually proven like an actual release from the company this one could squeeze tomorrow so i do want to watch it um astc i'm not in love with this one but the chart yeah this big boom back here then a secondary pop and then a tertiary pop right there that topped out at uh, 312 and it's kind of curled up and taken that out. Um, but it's not really in, excuse me, in play because I like stuff that has had a really high relative volume move in the last week or so. That's where my primary focus 
goes into whenever I'm trading. So this is one that's a little bit interesting, maybe over today's high tomorrow, you know, through that 350, then maybe it comes up and challenges this big move. But again, not really in play, so I don't like it that much. C-A-R-S, I already showed you the call that Keith made in this one. Well, we got a big volume day and a pretty strong close. We're gonna watch that for a possible continuation play tomorrow. Um, but you know what, let me give a shout out to Jane real quick too. Five minute candle, CLVS, actually even maybe even easier to see on twos. Jane called this flag today. So it looked like that. Whoops, you can't, you're not supposed to see that candle. Look like she called this little flag right here today, which was uh, you know basically a flag break, um, 860 entry idea. And it went pretty quickly to almost 930. So uh, I didn't want to leave Jane out because I thought that was a great post this morning. Now look how it closed. And that's the beauty of being a day trader. We don't care, right? We rent them. We sell into strength and we tighten our stop on the rest, put a break even. And uh, anyway, nice call by Jane. So cars, I talked about that one. MGNX is going to go on the list. Massive move today. Now, we don't want to teach anybody to chase and I certainly don't want to chase myself. But sometimes even with a crazy move like this, the next day you still get a set. So it's not like I'm oblivious to the fact that that is... Uh, really extended but since i don't hold overnight i look for intraday opportunities and that may give one a e z s big volume day closing well off its highs um but i want to watch that for maybe a red to green tomorrow i wanted to throw one bitcoin related play and so i've chosen c a n it topped out uh, the most recent highs just a few days ago at 524 and today topped out at 514 um, so back over this 524, maybe this one might get going only if the Bitcoin plays are running. And I actually use an over-the-counter stock GBTC as my gauge for how strong Bitcoin is. It's a pretty good gauge. Um, or you can go online and find a live Bitcoin chart. I don't waste my time with that. But um, Bitcoin, obviously, pretty strong. So CAN is my one Bitcoin play that I'm going to have on a chart. Crex, C-R-E-X. This is back to that thermal imaging uh, theme. This one right down into the buy zone today and kind of put in one of those indecision candles, but may have bottomed now after that massive move, what, about a week ago, a little over a week ago. So I want to watch that one. SM, just want to throw this energy play back on watch. It's really just flagging up here and you've got two red days in a row. So any kind of pop in oil, SM is a pretty handsome setup. Um, MDGS. I don't love this one. It's one of those Israeli stocks and these things never seem to get going. Um, I could pan out and show you how this just keeps getting slapped down every time it gets going. But that's also kind of the reason it's interesting to me because it happened again here a little over a week ago, right? Short's getting pretty cocky because this one always fails. Next thing you know, it gaps up huge, fails again. Short's even more cocky, but then gaps up again today. Still didn't get going. But if this thing can one of, the, one of these days break an opening range to the upside, especially in the afternoon, we might get a squeeze in this one. I think there might be a few shorts sweating it out in this one. So, um, you know, that's kind of my thesis. It's on the back burner because it's still getting slapped down every time it gaps up. But hopefully you understand the reason why I want to watch it. APDN, um, this one closed strong. It had news right at the closing bell, um, right before the closing bell and actually halted. Um, and then in after hours, now it's trading at, it actually went over 11. Right now it's trading at 10.95. Kind of annoyed at myself because I was going to maybe bid on a pullback after hours. Um, you know, one thing about after hours trading is you don't get encumbered by the stupid pattern, not the, not the pattern, I almost said pattern day trading, well, that stupid halt rule, right? Um, where whatever the percentage, if it moves too quickly, that doesn't happen in after hours. So, you know, I've always said, if I ever meet the man that invented that volatility halt rule, I'm gonna kick him in the nuts. And if it happens to be a woman, I'm going to kick her in the nuts. I don't care. Um, it's, it's the worst rule ever. All right. But anyway, so APDN, um, probably a gap play tomorrow, right? Uh, it's holding up really well trading. Um, you know, and then this is another scenario where you might have some shorts caught because you had the gap up and a lot of shorts just made a killing. And uh, now it's trading up here around 11. So we'll, we'll see where it's going to open tomorrow, but possible catalyst sometime tomorrow through this 1237. So I really do uh, have a lot of interest in this APDN tomorrow, but we'll see if we get an A plus set up. A couple more FSLY um, closed at 23.05 and it's trading at 27.50 and after hours. I believe they reported earnings, so possible gap play tomorrow. And sort of the same thing here on TTPH. It's trading at 2.28 and after hours. 
So I want to watch that one as well. And we'll add some other gappers in the pre-market. But great day in chat. Teamwork's fantastic. And we'll do it all again tomorrow. See you guys in the morning.